Hello, I'm CT Stealth, and this is a demonstration of curves. It's a continuance of my polygons versus nerves modeling. And uh, I've made this video about like 10 times now, so I'm going to try to make this short. I keep overshooting it. So uh, I'll just get down to it. Uh, and this is right here is representing a curve network. It's a network that in which you find the definitions of your model, uh, typically like uh, the base edges around it. Uh, each particular uh, curve will define a mesh and depending on how you move this curve will determine on whether you know whether you can it influences this mesh here so if I move the curve it's going to move the mesh but in order to understand that you need to understand how curves work so First of all, I'm going to start with this right here. I'm in the surfaces, and I'm also in the curves menu set here. This is the EP curve tool, and I'm going to click on this, and you need to kind of familiarize with the shortcut commands. There's the X, C, and V key. The X will snap to grid, the C will press, will snap to curves, and the V will snap to, uh, it stands for vertex, but in a curves case, it's an edit point. So. Uh, for this, I'm going to st hold down X and just left click to form these curves. And I create a general shape here. Now that I have a curve, I'm going to go to the attribute editor to demonstrate some of the details about the curves. You'll notice that uh, we have a spans and degrees here. Degrees represents the amount of detail a curve can permit. Uh, the degree should normally be three or higher if you're working in a 3D environment, but there's uh, different levels of these degrees, and depending on how low or high it is, will determine what you're working with. If it's one, it's a straight line. If it's a two, it's a two-dimensional object. And if it's four or higher, it's for more technical-based uh, modeling, like, uh, let me think, uh, CAD, technical direction, uh, the big buildings and things like that that require a lot of detail. So for the most part you'll always be focusing around three degrees. You can choose that um, by going to like different uh, menu sets here. I'll just kind of double click, click this to get the tool set settings and you know you have the, the degrees here one, two, three, four, uh, five, and seven. Uh, you can also put the knot spacing at uniform length, but anyway, I need to move on. Um, so, grab my mouse. Okay. So here's the spans. Now, what is a span? The spans are incredibly important because it defines the mesh of what the curves are based off of. So let me show this surface again. Now, if you picture these lines, each one of these lines have to be defined by another. Uh, point on this curve, and the curve that defines this is the edit points or control ver vertices. These kind of things are what represents the span. So if I'm going to right click this and I'll have these options, control vertex, edit points, holes, and curve points. Control vertex is like bending the m mesh of the curve. It's kind of like uh, pulling at a particular point right below the control vertex will be the edit point. The edit points are the points directly on the curve that I can use to snap to it. These are primarily what I use to snap two curves together. I'll, I'll use the edit points. I use the control vertices, vertices to manipulate the bend points of the between the two edit points. The holes on the other hand represent the lines between the uh, control vertices and to the next one uh, all around the shape. The more drastic these points are, the more you, the Maya program is telling you that you need more spans. So like this one right here is very, very sharp here, and it's a little sharp here and here. So that means it tells me that it would be a little bit better off if I had span, more spans between this. I can rebuild a curve, which you'll have to do quite often by going to Edit Curves, Rebuild Curve, and here's the option box for it. I have the tool settings here and I can increase the number of spans for the curve to however many as I want. In order to remember how many curves you need to do, you look you can look at the edit points and if you count between here e each edit points, 
you'll find out that you'll have exactly how many spans you need plus one. So for this one, it spans of seven. So if I were to count between all the edit points, I would have a total of eight. So that's one way to do it, but for the most part, it tells you here. If I look at the surfaces, which I'll get into another uh, another video, you'll see that it has two types of the, the spans. It has a 10 and a 7 for the U and the V. And that's just uh, kind of like kind of like X and Y, up and down, you know. Uh, the degrees are awful, also represented here. But for the most part, you have to know the spans in order to make a curved network because if you have this here and you have this curve, and let me hide this, and so you have this curve right here that define that line, it has a span of 6. So if this one has a span of anything but 6, the lines for this mesh will not match up. You'll probably get this either this weird square pattern or you'll have this twisted pattern that kind of like you know they curve the lines and sometimes the lines won't even match up with the edit points. The whole point is that you, these uh, these edges, also known as isoparms, need to match up with the edit points. The isoparms are only representative for the surfaces and that's just what they're called. The edit points are the points along the curve. So I'll hide that and I need to use these uh, curves in order to form the curve network. So, like I said, you need to remember the X, C, and V keys in order to, to snap to it. Uh, I'll select the C key and I'll click and you'll notice that my little X follows the curve and I use the uh, V key to snap to it. And I can create, you know, different things. For the most part, I rarely ever use perspective. I'm only using the perspective uh, in order to demonstrate this curve network. For the most part, I work in uh, the uh, front and side views because uh, you need to make sure you have more defined. The problem with the curved networks is is that sometimes a given point of say this, I'll have two meshes here. So if I created like another thing here, I'll just select these, go to surfaces, loft. Okay, so now you'll see that this here has a, uh, a point. It's not as clean cut as a polygon model would be. Well that's why you have to be careful with the the curve networks because you'll have these points or places in which the object won't mesh together. So you need to make sure that you project tangents to them or you can, um, let's see, where's modify curves, you, you, oh yes, there's cutting and intersecting the curves. You can also align the curves. The line curves will uh, click the two, if you click the between the two curves here and you go to align option toolbox, you'll have this uh, menu set here in which you can uh, make these align. Uh, I'm not going to do this because I'm kind of running out of time, but uh, there's uh, tangent, which is basically, it takes the two control vertices on both sides of the curve and it makes them tangent to one another, therefore making it a smooth line. Uh, the curvature will move the two vertices, so for here and here, it'll make those two a straight line. That's the primary difference between the two. So uh, you need to be very careful with this option here because this tells you in the order in which you select the curve, say if I select this curve first and this curve second, uh, it is this menu set is completely dependent on which order you clicked. So if modify position, you know, it might modify the first position of the first curve. Since you chose this curve first, it's going to modify this. And and you can modify the tangent since you if you want this one to move you have to click it on the second so that the second one will move and so that's that's just kind of a brief demonstration of the the curve networks and what you need to be wary of i'm going to start my next video now about uh how to utilize this curve network thank you for watching